Well, Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food is a national movement that's starting to catch on. Rather than buy produce that has traveled 1,500 miles and sat in storage for days, more and more shoppers are looking for produce freshly picked. Joining me now is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, farmers markets are alive and well here in Oklahoma, and more and more are popping up all the time, giving consumers the freshest produce possible while also providing the local farmers new markets for their hard work. Alpacas and turkeys and sheep. Oh my! It's a menagerie of animals at the Heaven Sent Food and Fiber Farm. Producing wholesome products with that fresh, on, off the farm quality. I want to know who I'm selling to. I, I want to know that I'm doing something good for, for people and their family. This is little boy. Colleen Thornton owns and operates the 60 acre farm in Northeast Oklahoma and says her philosophy is sustainability. Sustainability starts with community and ends there too. So if you, if you start with community, you're helping those people so that they can help somebody else. And therefore, you're, you're keeping the environment going well. You're keeping all of the people around you going well, either whether it be just helping them out because they need, need some help fixing a fence or you're, you're putting into the community till for somebody who's had a fire in their house or whatever. Same thing with the environment. You're going you're to be able to keep that environment for, for your kids, their kids, everything. And then as you go back, you buy it locally. That's going to sustain that community again. So to me, sustainability is a lot less of only environment and more related to people and the local economy and the local health of our neighbors and friends. Come here. Come on. And speaking of friends, Thornton can't run the farm by herself. This is Jasper. He was an abandoned lamb. She has a temporary farmhand <laughs> that, that stays by her side everywhere she no, goes. We're not eating the good stuff. Jasper's mom abandoned him, so we had to take him in, and we had to take him to the festival because he needed every two hour feeding at that point. And uh, while I was there, we, <laughs> we sold him for a pet. So I've been babysitting him until he got a little bit bigger and his new mama can take him. Hi, baby. And with Jasper so getting baby. all of the attention, <laughs> other critters were doing their best to steal the spotlight. <laughs> this is Loverboy. He is, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> he continues to do, pee on himself. <laughs> That's the perfume that the girl goats really like. I don't like it so much, but he thinks he's, he's hot stuff now, see. <laughs> now, these animals aren't just for fun. They are a vital piece of Thornton's sustainable, <laughs> agricultural <laughs> puzzle. So he actually sheds four times a year. And when he's shedding, this undercoat comes off, and that undercoat is what I what I use as Angora yarn. We send their fleeces in for spinning into yarns, and then I also spin some. Although her green thumb and love for animals is her living, this down-home farmer hasn't always called the country life home. I have a master's degree in business, accounting, and finance. And my last job was at American Airlines in cargo and then global accounts. So spinach. An entrepreneur who offers her harvest at farmers markets while your, educating people your, about uh, where it comes from. Are gonna be and that's from the rabbit. Yeah, feel it. Feel oh, it on your face. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's just beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Angora rabbit is seven times warmer than sheep. Is it really? Uh huh. Right. Uh, and alpaca is three times warmer than, than, than sheep's wool. Pleasing customers with her selection that ranges from fur to food. Making friends out of every customer. That is nine dollars. We we don't use any chemicals on our on our stuff. Thank you so Thank much. You. But we like to support the local agriculture market and and uh, we're kind of farmers ourselves. Uh, good morning. And Thornton uh, says farming is greens? only half. Okay of what she does. A couple things happen when you're on a farmer's market. One is that you don't always have something to sell. If, you're, if your seasons go bad, you have a problem with weather, that kind of thing. So one of the things I, no I noticed when I was selling just vegetables was I needed something consistent. So soaps is consistent, the wools are consistent, and so you have something that you can always talk to somebody about. And the more you have to talk to somebody about, the more you draw people in. 
singular in my in my market, I would have not enough options, uh, and so I try to diversify. Like this stuff, and that's and diversify, she does. <laughs> Aside from the variety of products she offers, Thornton travels to different farmers' markets to reach as many consumers as possible. You know, people don't understand the amount of time and energy and straight capital investment that it, it takes. Um, you have to be so dedicated to that dream that you are willing and able to do like 5 or 6 a.m. to 9, 10, 11 o'clock and then up during the middle of the night for lambing and kidding and those kinds of things too. Um, seven days a week. Which can require a change in character. Dressed in pioneer garb, Thornton attends festivals, promoting her natural yarn. This is very labor intensive. It's why that uh, they quickly became me mechanized for the for all of the mills in England in his historically, because it is labor intensive. Um, because this is only a part of the process. You have first you have your sheep. Obviously, you have to shear the sheep. Once you have the the sheared sheep, which we have some raw wool in in these bags in here. Um, you have to wash the lanolin out. Producing local food and fiber for local people. We have a farmer's market that it's getting bigger and better and being able to keep that money local and in, in our community and let it continue to rotate in our community. There, there's studies out there that say that if, if you buy from a local person that that money will stay in your community about 80%. Whether she's barefoot at the market or working on the farm, calling Thornton Step up. is leading the way for a sustainable farming future. Come on, Jasper. Well, Thornton's business is still new. They currently sell at two farmer's markets and would like to continue to grow. And I take it there is a big difference between having your regular old backyard garden and trying to grow commercially. So what does it take to set up a farm like this? Well, it's possible, but difficult. With the price of good farmland averaging about $3,000 an acre and the price of diesel continuing to soar, the best way to do it is either to inherit your farmland or to lease the land or in many cases work a couple of jobs or maybe even three. Not only does Thornton's husband work a full-time job, but as we just saw, Colleen has a thriving hand-spun wool business online. All right, and we do have, or we just happen to have, a link to that thriving business at okhorizon.com under this week's stories.